everyone. Welcome to this evening's live stream. I am uh, here today to answer an email I got. And what frequently happens is that I get emails and it sounds like such a simple question. And I think, oh my gosh, I could write like 10 pages on this and never be done. So um, this is where a lot of my live streams come from. And the question today sounds so incredibly simple. Like I should be able to answer this in just a few words. And the reality is unfortunately it's complicated. So the question is, what do I need to test my goat for to make sure her milk is safe for my family to drink? It seems perfectly reasonable. I should just be able to give you a list of like a couple things and you should be good to go, right? Um, I wish it was that simple. So um, the first thing, the first part of the answer is that um, diseases like tuberculosis and brucellosis are um, transmitted in milk. So um, you do need to be sure that your goats are free from TB and brucellosis. Um, the great thing is that most states in the U.S., are certified free from both tuberculosis and brucellosis. Um, there's a USDA website where you can check this. It changes a little bit from year to year. Every now and then there'll be, um, you know, a state will have some cases of TB, in which case it's not certified free anymore. Um, sometimes they can, these cases can be in wild deer uh, and things like that. So it's not something that you necessarily need to worry about, you know, unless you have a lot of wild deer in your pasture. But anyway, um, in most cases, it, it's it's highly likely that you live in a state that is certified TB free and brucellosis free. So those are two that you do not need to worry about. And if you're not certified free, it's easy enough to get those tests done. Um, th then it gets complicated. <laughs> Um, you know, if you test a goat for TB or brucellosis and they're negative, you're like, yeah, cool. That's great. My goat does not have TB or brucellosis. And, you know, you're probably safe. However, that's where it gets complicated. So um, a lot of animals and people even um, can have um, salmonella, E. coli, campylobacter, listeria um, in their system and not necessarily be sick. So um, somebody also recently asked me this question about um, if it was safe for their pregnant daughter to drink their raw goat milk because they have healthy goats. They know their goats are healthy. So why can't, you know, but their, their pregnant daughter was worried about drinking it. And so she's wondering, um, you know, if she needed to be worried. And so it's absolutely true that if you have sick goats, that they can give you a disease through their milk. But it's not necessarily true that just because a goat appears to be healthy, that there is nothing that it could could give you through its milk. So um, there are, you know, like things like Salmonella, E. coli, Campylobacter, Listeria. Those are all things that a goat can have. Um, and the thing is, it, it may not necessarily be in the milk, it may be in the poop. And so um, if your hygiene at milking time is not absolutely um, really good, then you could wind up with a problem here. I know someone who gave themselves Campylobacter from drinking raw goat milk because they were out doing chores and didn't bother to wash their hands before they went and milked their goats. And, you know, they'd had goats for like 15 years or more. And, you know, sometimes when you've had goats for a long time, you can get a little um, relaxed, a little too relaxed in the way that you do things. And that was the case with him. So you definitely um, want to make sure that you are always washing your hands. And this is one of the, this is like the main reason why people talk about, um, pasteurizing your milk before you drink it. Um, we almost never pasteurize milk because it's either used in cooking, it's added to hot coffee, which is 180 degrees and milk is pasteurized instantly once it crosses the 170 degree threshold. Um, so when you just put a blop of milk into your hot coffee, boom, it's pasteurized. Um, if you use your milk for cooking, um, it's pasteurized. So 
you know, 170 degrees, it's instantly pasteurized. So this is where I feel like some people who promote raw milk and say you should use raw milk for everything don't really understand um, that if you cook with milk, it's going to be pasteurized because once it heats up to 170 degrees, it is instantly pasteurized. Um, so if you um, pasteurize your milk, no worries. If you want to drink it raw, then you absolutely need to be incredibly careful with your hygiene. You need to make sure that you wash your hands before you milk your does. Um, and even then, you know, it's, you, you just, don't necessarily know like, well, what if the goat was just laying on some poop, you know, like it doesn't have to be diarrhea. Like these um, viruses and bacteria are invisible to the naked eye. So like they're in poop, even though you don't see them. And um, a very, there was a very large listeriosis outbreak at a Connecticut dairy farm a number of years back when they had an open farm day and, um, there was a huge number of people wound up with listeriosis and the CDC came in and, um, did an investigation and stuff. And part of the investigation now includes going onto Facebook. And when they went onto Facebook, they saw like this one picture that shall remain ingrained in my brain forever. This little girl was laying in a goat pen and you know, like, it's not just clean straw, there's poop in there. And so um, they tested all of the milk, they tested the kitchen, everything. There was no listeria in any of their products. There was no listeria in their milk. There was no listeria in their cheese. People got listeria from like rolling around in the goat pens and petting the goats and just being out there um, exposed to goat poop. So that can definitely, and all of these goats were healthy. You know, the goats were not having any problems. No, none of the goats were showing signs of listeriosis. And yet there was listeria that was being transmitted. So, um, you don't know what you don't know. Like, and when something's invisible, you don't know if it's there. So, um, if you, plan to drink your milk. Um, certainly if you've got anyone in your house that's pregnant or immune compromised, it's a good idea um, to pasteurize it. Otherwise you, um, it's a risk that you're taking in terms of if you are, you know, you're being absolutely really, really scrupulous um, with cleaning the dough's udder and washing your hands and all that kind of stuff before um, when you're collecting the milk and straining it and doing first squirts, you know, into a strip cup before you um, start milking into the bucket for collecting for human use and all of that stuff. So it's not just a matter of making sure that your goat tests negative for diseases. There's a lot more to it than that. So, um, and then the other thing, um, and this is controversial, is, is that some people, um, feel that Crohn's disease in humans may be caused by consuming milk from animals that have yonis. Um, so I'm a huge proponent of biosecurity screening anyway. The person who asked this question said she's listened to the podcast. So um, hopefully she heard the, the one that we did on biosecurity and bought goats that came from a herd that's tested negative for yonis disease as well as um, CAE and CL. Um, but that's one of the things that is um, controversial is about the possibility that goat milk from an animal with yonis could give a person Crohn's disease. And, and the thing, and the, the big thing that makes that controversial is that they, is that pasteurizing milk does not necessarily kill yonis. So that makes it very tricky. Um, in terms of that, but hopefully, um, so if you want to know another thing to test for, um, that is definitely one. I would definitely have my goats, um, know that you buy your goats from a herd that's tested negative for, um, the big three that we talked about in the biosecurity, uh, episode of the podcast. And, um, and then also are your goats, 
is your state certified TB free and brucellosis free? If so, it's very unlikely you have to worry about those diseases. And then the other thing is just the kind of bugs, little microscopic bugs that can be transmitted from the feces of any animal to uh, humans, um, you know, like Salmonella, E. coli, Campylobacter, Listeria, those things. Um, so hopefully this has been helpful and it gives you a better idea of what you need to do to make sure that your milk is safe for your family because we all love goat milk. So I'm always very happy to help people um, enjoy their goat milk and the cheese and all of the wonderful things that their goats can make for them. Bye for now.